Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to walk you through an example in Excel that will show you how you can calculate a firm's weighted average cost of capital, also known as WAC. So suppose you're given the following information for Jacob Electronics. You're told that the firm has 20,000 5.1% coupon bonds and that the par value of each bond is $2,000. What that means is that on an annual basis, each bond pays you 5.1% of the $2,000 par value. On top of that, you're told that the bonds are going to mature in 20 years, which means that after 20 years, you are going to receive $2,000, which is the par value of the bond as well. And you're further told that the bonds are selling for 105% of par value. So basically 2,100. Now, why are the bonds trading at a price higher than par value? Well, the only reason that can happen is when the rate of return or the yield that investors require of these bonds is less than 5.1%. You're further told that the bonds make semi-annual coupon payments. So this 5.1% on an annual basis is actually 2.55% on a semi-annual basis. You're further told that common stock is such that the firm has 900,000 shares outstanding and each is selling for $77 per share. You're also told that the beta of the company is 0.95. So assuming that the corporate tax rate is 21%, the risk-free rate is 4%, and the market risk premium is 7%, the question is what is the company's weighted average cost of capital? Now recall that weighted average cost of capital is calculated as B over B plus S, which is the debt ratio that the firm has, or debt in relation to the total of debt and equity, into the cost of debt, into one minus the tax rate. We multiply cost of debt with one minus the tax rate because debt is tax deductible. So what we're really interested in is the after tax cost of debt. And then plus S over B plus S into the cost of equity. This is the formula for weighted average cost of capital. So what we really need are three or four things. One, we need to know what the debt ratio is. And for that, we will need to figure out like what is the worth of debt and what is the worth of equity. So for that, we will need to multiply the price of the bonds, which we are given, uh, times the number of bonds that are outstanding. And then we'll do the same to determine the worth of equity. The cost of debt is essentially the rate that bondholders are requiring or the yield to maturity that investors are requiring on this firm's bond. So we will need to calculate the yield to maturity and then multiply that by one minus the tax rate. We will need to determine one minus the tax rate. That's easy because the tax rate is given. And the last thing that we will need to figure out is the cost of equity. Cost of equity can be calculated using a capital asset pricing model, which basically says that the cost of equity is equal to the risk-free rate plus the firm's equity beta or beta into the market risk premium. And guess what? We are told a risk-free rate of 4%. The beta of the stock is given, which is 0.95 and the market risk premium is given as well. So we have all the inputs to figure all this information out. So with that in mind, I've written down all the information that we're given on bonds, on stock, and other market data. I'm going to remove all this part because I wanna calculate my output over here. So first, my cost of debt. Like I said, cost of debt is essentially the rate of return that investors are requiring on these bonds, which is essentially the yield to maturity. You can calculate it using the rate function in Excel. If you invoke the rate function, it will ask you for the number of time periods, which in this case is 20, but that's years. Notice that the payments are being made on a semi-annual basis. So I'm gonna do 20 multiplied by two because the total number of time periods is actually 40, six month periods. It then asks me for the payment. The payment is the coupon payment that you're going to be receiving. And again, because it's semi-annual, I'm going to do 5.1% divided by 2. And then I'm going to multiply that by my face value. Next is present value. Present value is the price of the bond today. That is what you will need to pay to purchase the bond today. And we are told that that number is 105% of par value. So I'm going to do 105% times the par value. Now over here, I'm going to make sure that I do times negative par value. Why? Because I want this number to be a negative. Why? Because 
the price is what I'm going to have to pay. So that's a cash outflow, whereas the payments that I'm going to receive are inflows. That is why I had my payment as a positive number. In fact, for that reason, my future value, which is the one lump sum amount that I will get 20 years from now, which is the par value, that is also a payment that I'm going to receive. So that is going to be just $2,000 positive. So when I do this, I get a rate of 2.36%. However, be careful, this is the semi-annual yield because you've calculated it using semi-annual numbers. So one last thing that you need to do is double click here and put all of this in parentheses and multiply it by two because that is going to give you your annualized yield, which is 4.71%. Notice that this number is indeed less than 5.1%, and that is not a coincidence. That is because your bonds are selling at 105% of par. Next, we're gonna calculate our cost of equity. This is rather straightforward. This is simply equal to the risk-free rate, which is given 4%, plus the beta, which is given 0.95, times the market risk premium, which is also given 7%. So if you do all of that, you get 10.15%. So we have the cost of debt, we have the cost of equity. Now what remains are the values of debt and equity because we will need this information to figure out our debt ratio. Value of debt is simply equal to the price at which it is selling, which is 105% times the par value, which is 2000. We will then multiply this price by the total number of bonds, which is 20,000. So this gives us the worth of all the bonds that are trading right now. So we get $42 million. We can do the same kind of math to figure out the value of equity. Value of equity is simply price per share times the number of shares outstanding, which are 900,000. And so when we do that, we get $69.3 million, so debt ratio, which is debt in relation to the worth of both debt and equity is simply debt divided by the sum of these two numbers. And so now to calculate the weighted average cost of capital, all you do based on the formula that I just showed you is 37.74, which is the debt ratio. I will multiply it by the yield to maturity. And I will further multiply this by one minus the tax rate. And the tax rate is given 21%. So that's one part of it. And then I'm going to do plus one minus the debt ratio, because that is going to give me the equity portion times the cost of equity, which is we just calculated 10.15%. So now when we do all of this, we get 7.5%. 72%. And so there you have it, whack calculation using cost of debt and cost of equity in Excel. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.